Hey guys, coming at you from the studio here at the church today. Um, as you know, we have been in a very modified footprint in deployment um, in terms of how we've mixed for our services due to COVID over the past uh, few months. And so with that, we have been mostly post uh, on a lot of our worship elements. Um, and so we have done some things differently in our post-production processes that we were not able to do live. Uh, so as you know, we have Digico SD10 at front of house that's coming out through Maddie to an MGB that gets us into the sound grid network and brings us into the studio with LV1. Um, super rack at front of house, multi rack in some of the other venues, waves and other venues as well. Uh, but one of the things that we have discovered that we really pr uh, preferred that really has helped us hone our sound in the in the way we want things to sound uh, are some EQs that are not readily available in those platforms live. Uh, and so uh, like Mag EQ4 plugins, some of the Valhalla uh, DSP plugins, a couple of the Brainworks things through um, through UAD or through Plugin Alliance, uh, the SPL Iron, some of those different things, Shadow Hills and Mastering Comp, some of those things that we've done in our post environments uh, for years, um, decades possibly even at this point, um, we're just not able to do live as things stand. So in some cases, some plugins like some of the Sonics plugins that we've utilized, some of the even the Maggie Q plugin alliance plugin, some of those things are available in SoundGrid. The challenge is that in the state of waves currently, um, those SoundGrid plugins are not available to run in the 64 bit architecture. So if it's the Super Rack or LV1 <coughs> footprints and deployments, those are not capable. In some of the older spaces with multi rack, or other uh, uh, methodologies of however we're getting to waves, those are available. And, but here in the studio and in our live environments, we haven't been able to do that. And so the workarounds, uh, and the beauty of LV1 is it's essentially a fluid platform want to do large in part we can accomplish um, and so w the beauty of that is because of such we could have external uh, uh, processing analog outboard gear uh, a lot of the things we've done post um, is running through some of the manly elot processor compressors uh, some of the uh, the fusion SSL uh, stuff and some of those things have been happening uh, some of the analog summing some of those things are ex or have have historically happened externally um, and s as such there's a great beauty in LV1 to give us those same capabilities because there's uh, a, a plugin that you can essentially instantiate for all purposes that is a essentially just an I.O. plugin. It gives you an in and out uh, in any capacity. So that could be going in through an I.O.X. unit here at our desk, uh, out to outboard gear. It can be going through SoundGrid into other devices. And so what we are doing currently uh, and what in the kind of the purpose of this video today is to one, show you what we're doing in terms of routing to get in and out of SoundGrid and back to Live Professor, which inside Live Professor gives us the ability to run any of those VST plugins that are not native SoundGrid. Um, so the case of the Valhalla Supermasses or the similar plugins or the, the, uh, the uh, SPL Ironworks, some of those different, um, some SPL Irons, some of those different things that we're using, uh, we are now capable to, uh, and fully deployed to have running. Inside our Access One uh, computer here in the studio, uh, we are now able to run those. Uh, via LV, uh, LV1 in and out to Live Professor. Uh, so that's what this purpose of it is today. I'm going to show you a couple things really quickly, and then we're going to dive in deeper in some um, uh, videos to come just on some of the ways we're mixing with that and some of the things that have changed in how we um, are deploying uh, some of our chains just in terms of getting out to the broadcast. Uh, so stay with me, and we'll, go, we'll dive in here real quick. Okay, so... Um, Obviously, same kind of normal s deployment that we've seen historically. Uh, the only difference is you now will see uh, the LV1 um, uh, windows is, are in the background currently. And then here we have our live professor. So I'll bring it up here so that you can see. Let me close down some of these channels. Um, so live professor is running here. Obviously, you see that. And then essentially, Live Professor works similar to what you've seen historically in some of our multi rack environments, um, essentially building a chain out and then gives you um, essentially, if you think about this, is kind of your IO infrastructure um, settings, et cetera, and then out. So, in the case of like our main bus, we have uh, SPL Iron. These are actually backwards currently, but SPL Iron kind of is the end, Maggie Q. And then if you're looking, you can see that we're routing in and out of our desk through SoundGrid 910, being obviously 
um, left and right, uh, and, and back out to that. And so the easiest way to look at that is if we're actually deploying and looking over here at our main bus, um, you can see on the window of the channel strip, there's now an EQ that's the external insert. You can find that simply by just pushing in and there's an external insert. So once you're in there, your external, this in this case it's in insert four. I know it's probably a little blurry just because of the nature of the lens um, and the angle we're shooting from. But you can see essentially that it's in its insert, you set the left to come in, you know, to go out at a certain place, come in at a and you, you returned back. Uh, so left is nine, right is 10. And that's what you see over here. Uh, and then as such, inside the window, we can then pop open our, our plugins specifically. So our EQ4 plugins uh, or the SPL Iron pl plugin will pop up as well. Uh, that will float on top and build up. So just to give you a little bit, I'm just going to kind of play around with a little bit, let you kind of see uh, and hear a bit of what we're doing. None of these things are dialed in as of yet. Um, we're just now getting things online, doing um, our final testing, and then we'll begin to dial in a mix. We're just going to uh, listen for the sake of um, listening and just kind of showing you a little bit of what's happening over here uh, over the next uh, little bit. So if you'll just bear with me, uh, we'll take a listen here. I'll punch through a few things and kind of let you hear where, um, where we're headed. Um, and then you'll get a feel for how this works.
So I think that gives you a, a pretty good idea of where things are going to go. Uh, there are now obviously the native Waves plugins that we're used to, the used ones you're used to seeing, uh, and now there's some additional things. Uh, and you'll notice that we've lightened it. 96K, we're running a really low DSP load now uh, by moving and offboarding some of those uh, effects that we were doing historically previously. The H um, reverbs um, and some of those hybrid reverbs that we were running do take up a lot of our, our uh, DSP. And so this has helped lighten the load quite a bit. And on the Axis, um, it's a six core machine. Uh, it's proven to be very, very solid uh, with very uh, few issues. There was a couple of hiccups just in terms of getting things to, to run uh, cleanly, but um, it's been it's been great. So um, looking forward to what this will do for us, uh, and we'll check you next time. Thanks.